Welcome to the CoreLogic RP Data Housing Market Update for February 2015. The year started on a strong footing for the housing market with the CoreLogic Home Value Index showing a 1.3% gain across the combined Capital City Index, the highest month-on-month -month reading since July last year. Once again, it was Sydney and Melbourne driving the index higher, with Australia's two largest capital cities recording a 1.4 and 2.7% increase in dwelling values over the month. The smaller state capital, Hobart, also recorded a solid result over the month, with the Hobart dwelling index up 1.6%. With the overall month-on-month -month result was strong, most data flows are pointing towards a slowing trend in the housing market. Perth, Darwin and Adelaide recorded decline in dwelling values over the month and the annual growth trend is tapered across every capital city. Across the combined capital cities, the annual pace of growth has been moderating since April last year when the combined capitals index recorded an 11.5% annual rate of growth. At the end of January, the annual rate of growth had trimmed to 8%. In fact, every capital city is now recording an annual rate of growth that's below its recent peak. The lowest rate of annual growth over the past 12 months was in Canberra, which is the only capital city to record a fall in values over the year. Values were down by 0.3%. Darwin and Perth recorded the second and third lowest annual rates of growth at 1.4% and 2.6% respectively. Not so coincidentally, these three cities were also the capitals where the rate of capital gain peaked the earliest. Sydney and Melbourne have continued to record the highest rate of annual capital gain at 13% and 7% respectively. Other indicators are also signalling that the housing market is gradually losing some momentum. The annual pace of dwelling sales peaked in July last year and has drifted 3.3% lower by the end of November. Auction clearance rates have been trending lower since early September last year when the weighted average clearance rate across the capital cities reached a peak of 74%. At the end of the last year, CoreLogic was reporting a clearance rate of 64% and clearance rates had slipped lower at the end of January recorded at 62%. Private treaty metrics are no longer tightening with a level of vendor discounting holding relatively steady at 5.5% in December, while the average selling time showed a slight increase in December to 38 days, on average up from 35 days in November. CoreLogic's pain and gain analysis has shown the proportion of loss-making sales moved slightly higher over the September quarter, with 9.3% of all resales across the country recording a gross loss. Those residential properties that sold at a gross loss were on average held for 5.7 years and the highest proportion of loss making sales were located in the regional resource driven areas of Queensland and Western Australia. As always, the trends are quite different from city to city. In Sydney, we're still seeing exceptionally strong housing market conditions. Dwelling values were up 13% over the past 12 months, which is the highest rate of growth of any capital city. There is some growing concern about the heat emanating from the Sydney's housing market. Cumulatively, since the beginning of 2009, Sydney dwelling values have moved 57% higher with a large part of the growth being driven by investment. Based on ABS housing finance data, excluding refinance loans, investors accounted for 59% of all mortgage commitments across New South Wales in November last year. Melbourne's housing market remains strong, but is continuing to play a second fiddle to Sydney from a capital gain perspective with dwelling values up 7% over the past 12 months. The rate of annual capital gain has slipped from a recent peak of 11.9% in January last year. An increasing gap between the performance of houses and apartments is forming across Melbourne, with house values up a much stronger 7.5% over the past year, compared with unit values which have only increased by 2.7%. The lower rate of growth in the unit market can probably be attributed to the higher supply levels of newly built apartments in the city centre, which has kept a lid on the rate of capital gain. Brisbane's housing market has continued to surprise on the downside with annual growth peaking at 7% halfway through last year before tapering back to 4.6% over the 12 months to the end of January. Similar to Melbourne, detached housing is showing a much higher rate of capital gain compared with units. Over the past year, Brisbane house values were up 5.1% compared with a 0.3% rise in unit values. Gross rental yields are still well above the averages found in Sydney and Melbourne, with a typical Brisbane house showing a 4.4% gross yield and apartments providing a healthy 5.5% gross yield. In Adelaide, the housing market has cooled somewhat from the moderate conditions of 2014. Dwelling values were down 1.2% over the month of January and have only moved 3.1% higher over the past 12 months. Adelaide is the only capital city market where apartments have shown a higher rate of value growth than houses. Over the past year, Adelaide unit values increased by 4.5% compared with a 2.9% gain in house values. 
The Perth market has continued to weaken with dwelling values down 0.6% over the month of January and the annual rate of growth slipping back to just 2.6%. The Perth housing market was one of the first capital cities to move through the peak of its growth cycle when dwelling values increased by 9.9% over the 2013 calendar year. Since that time, the annual rate of growth has been trending lower, with Perth rent down by 3.2% over the past 12 months and the year-on-year -year transaction numbers down 8.8%, this market is clearly weak. Hobart had some very positive news to report this month, recording the highest rolling quarterly rate of capital gain of any capital city. Over the three months ending January, Hobart dwelling values are up 4.4%. Part of the substantial increase can be explained by volatility, however the Hobart housing market has been broadly improving from a very soft position. Gross rental yields are now the second highest of any capital city after Darwin, housing is very affordable, transaction numbers are rising and there has been some improvement in economic conditions across Tasmania. The gradual improvement in Hobart's housing market comes after a long period where values were in decline. In fact Hobart dwelling values are now roughly at the same level as they were in 2008. Darwin's housing market has been losing pace since the annual rate of growth peaked back in late 2012 at 13.1%. At the end of January, values had increased by a much lower 1.4% over the 12-month period. Rents are now falling in Darwin and the outlook for growth has diminished as migration slows and the pipeline of major infrastructure work winds out. Canberra is the only capital city to record a fall in dwelling values over the past 12 months, with values down 0.3%. With weekly rents down 4.4% and the number of transactions down by 7% year on year, the nation's capital has become Australia's weakest housing market. Overall, we're continuing to see a very high rate of growth across the core logic combined capital city index being driven by a very lively Sydney housing market. While value growth is still relatively strong in Melbourne, every other capital city is recording much more sustainable housing market conditions. Further to that, every capital city is currently recording an annual rate of growth that is below their recent peaks. There is some potential that lower interest rates will refuel housing market demand. The Reserve Bank cut the cash rate by 25 basis points on February 2nd, taking the average discounted variable mortgage rate to 4.85%. That's the lowest cost of mortgage debt since July 1968. Lower mortgage rates have the potential to reinvigorate buyer demand. However, the stimulus from lower rates may not be as influential on housing market conditions as what we've seen in the past. Lower consumer confidence, stricter serviceability requirements for the borrowers, tighter lending conditions on investors, affordability challenges and low rental yields are all factors that may contribute to an ongoing moderation in housing market conditions over 2015. The ideal outcome for the Reserve Bank under the new interest rate setting would be that housing market conditions continue to moderate back to more sustainable levels, but housing demand remains strong enough to keep dwelling construction at the current high levels and new home sales relatively high. The challenge for the Reserve Bank is to stimulate stronger economic growth without overstimulating the housing market. Once again, thanks for tuning in to CoreLogic RP Data's housing market update for February 2015. Of course, you can always find more information on the housing market and housing market conditions at www.corelogic.com.au.